have a lot of things on my mind. I took a minute to figure out what it was I was going to put into a video blog. I'm going to start with the idea for generating electricity wherever you're at, essentially. It would be best if it's used in a structure. Think of a coffee pot. You heat the plate up and the, the water goes up to the top to go through the coffee. It's the same general principle that I'm trying to use with the uh, tree fountain, a.k.a. tree of life. You use that to push the water up and you're going to have a couple of things going on. First off, you're cleaning off the water to a degree because you're heating it up to a point that makes it so that all the little bacteria and stuff that could be harmful to you are getting boiled off. Secondly, if you're pushing all this through a tree, it's going to speed up the growth process of the tree if it's done properly. You can't flood the tree, but at the same time, if you have or give the tree access to uh, water and nutrients relatively close at hand, instead of forcing it to push it all up on its own, you're going to have a growth spurt from the tree. Now, the electricity idea. If you're pushing water up, you go and you put water into a tank. Now, all it's really going to take for you to produce electricity is some sort of small water wheel. It can be smaller than a fidget spinner. You know, you toy with the idea, do whatever you can with it. But if you just use some plumbing instead of electrical wire, then you flip a switch, which starts the water, which generates the electricity at location for whatever it is that you want to power. Uh, obviously, you can make more or less depending on different things that you do with it. You know, I won't even get into all that. I'm sure somebody can figure that out. So if you've got all this water suspended up there, that's potential energy. Potential energy can always be used in any number of ways. Since you're using hydro energy, essentially, I mean, you can use it for mechanical and electrical. Uh, you can use it for other things, too, because you can create sounds using how the water falls, you know, different things like that. All these different things can make real effects for how we live on a day to day basis. We really don't need to have all these power lines and all these uh, extra plumbing from, you know, to create a grid. W what use is a grid? Think about this for a second. Why would cities, government, all that insist? that you use their grid. A grid, by the way, that they don't even maintain very well because you get all sorts of problems with water and electric all across the country all the time. So what's the point? We're wasting money to upkeep a poorly upkept grid so that government can shut off your utilities at any time they so choose because you're not paying them enough or whatever. I'm sorry, the government gets over 50% of everyone's income. Over 50% of everyone's income. This is not a democracy anymore. We're living in an anarchistic uh, socialism. You know, socialism isn't necessarily that bad, but not the way we're doing it. 
and we certainly don't have democracy. We haven't had democracy for a good long while because no one's really had the opportunity or a chance to vote in any sort of election that isn't rigged from the get. And it's rigged using legal terms so that it looks good. I mean, it, it's better if you call a murder something like uh, defending some one's person it's so easy to twist that around. You know, we need to really start looking at the content of the things that are around us. We get these stories, you know, and I, I've fallen into a few of them. I'm classical conspiracy nut, you know, a little crazy. But I also recognize when things aren't quite what is being said on the news either. And we're really, we're cutting ourselves off short and running blind, expecting the government and the media outlets, the mainstream media outlets to actually tell us what's going on. We didn't get a full story in 9-11. What makes you think we're gonna get a full story now? You know, that's with anything. You need to take a good hard look on what your government is actually doing. It's supposed to be serving the people. My question is, is it? I don't care if it's, oh, well, we're doing the best we can with a system that's imperfect. Okay, so why aren't you looking to, at ways to improve? That's the government's responsibility at this point. It's not to shrug it off and say, oh, this is the best we can do. You're just shit out of luck. Uh, no, uh, there's too many things that can easily be taken care of that we're allowing to go on, thinking that we're doing the right thing while the politicians are saving jobs. You're not saving any jobs by sending somebody out to a construction site over and over and over and over and over again, doing nothing but tearing up the same work over and over and over again. None of what is actually going on right in front of us is really making sense. And I'm really baffled at why people can't see this. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. I'm very frustrated because it's been right out in my face for as long as I can tell. It's been one of the things driving me the craziest. You know, you get somebody saying, well, we need to make it so that this danger, this problem is stopped and everything they do winds up making it worse. So what are you really doing? You know, it, this isn't something that, ha ha, I told you so, you're a fool. This is, hey, I've been made the fool. I know what's going on. I see it. I've been slapped upside the head a couple of times in some not so nice ways. You know, I'm not trying to say I'm better than anyone. I'm trying to say, look around. Just look. There's things that we've been trained to just shrug off. We want to ignore things that don't look good to us. We're almost afraid to take responsibility, which quite frankly, I can't, I can't understand how we have allowed ourselves to get to this point. We've actually made it illegal to do the right thing in America by making it look like we're doing the right thing. Yeah, we're actually supporting crime 
under the name of law and order. We're supporting death of spirituality under the name of religion. Look at how these places, institutions, whatever you want to call them, look at how all these things are telling you what to look for and how to do. And then take a good look at what the actual effect of what you're doing is. Don't just take their word for it, because I'll tell you this right now. You take that and say, this is the absolute truth and this is how I'm going to live. You are going to screw yourself and so many more people over. And it's all because you believe. And you didn't ask. You didn't look. You simply believed. Everybody needs to take a good close look. Everybody's to blame. I'm not excluded. I still look at myself and what I'm doing and wonder if there's something better that I can be doing with myself or my time. I am exhausted because every attempt I have made in the past has been met with something kicking me in the teeth, telling me, you can't do this. And usually it's under some sort of law. Either that or over somebody's beliefs and what they think one book or another says. It doesn't matter if it's the Quran or the Bible or the I Ching. Uh, they all have good. They also have a lot of people that really mess up what they're trying to say. All of them essentially come from the same source if you believe God created everything. <sighs> I guess I could go on for days or years or whatever. I'm currently at 12.23 on the clock. I think I might be cutting it off here. Anyway... If you've gotten through all this video, I certainly appreciate. Leave a comment. Uh, I'm looking for help, advice. I want to get this thing going. You know, grow a home for world peace. That's not just that's not just rhetoric. I really honestly believe that if we started to look at how we can care for the things that we're taking for granted, I mean look at it for a minute to build a home the first thing that needs to happen is a bunch of trees need to get cut down and processed for wood so they get cut down they get transported well that's an awful lot of expense just for that then you go and you get them to a processing plant, which that really does take an awful lot of work too, because first you got to cut them down, then you got to smooth them out and put them into kilns. And there's a lot of work and effort that actually goes into processing things like two by fours. Once you get that done, now you send it to the storage facility somewhere where it's going to sit for a while until somebody buys it so that they can build a house or a building of their own. Well, it's not quite over yet because now you go to whatever lot and you clear cut it and clear it off. You tear up all the plants, you cut down all the trees, dig a big hole and start a foundation. Okay, why grow a home for world peace? How does growing a home lead to world peace? Instead of clear-cutting that lot that you got to go and buy dead trees for anyway, how about you utilize what's there? Start caring for the trees and the plants. You know, cultivate them, shape them you can get an awful lot more for a structure that's alive and growing 
and it doesn't need to take as much time as what people keep telling me. I'm absolutely certain that I could get a livable structure that is good looking put together with all the basic amenities like electric, running water, you know, the, all of that in about a year's time. This is a growing structure that I'm talking about. I'm, this isn't just, you know, whatever. This is actually a step up. All right, so let's take the time to grow a structure. We've, we've taken a year to grow a structure, right? So what's going to happen now? Isn't it going to do the same thing that a normal building does? Well, no, it's growing. First off, think of this real quick. Termites aren't going to go after living wood. There's one problem out, of the, out the window. Well, what about foundations? Wouldn't that crack the, the concrete? Well, there's a couple of solutions to that. One is self-healing concrete. It cracks, water and air gets into it. It basically seals itself using, I believe, a type of bacteria. It could be a fungus, I'm not sure, that interacts with the oxygen around it to create a calcified area, making the concrete stronger where it cracked. Okay, there's one solution. Why are there two? Because you don't need concrete with something that already has a foundation and roots. This isn't a foundation that's going to crack. It's not going to break. It might shift, but it's not going to shift in a way that is going to destroy the structure. You look at most buildings now and the building shifts on the foundation. It's a huge issue. That, that's a lot of money to try to fix. I mean, it, you could wind up with the entire structure collapsing any time after something like that, from what I understand. That might be a little extreme, but you get the idea. Living structure, okay, you get the plumbing in, you got electricity. The electricity is right there in your building. The plumbing is taken care of right there in your building. If you're actually cultivating the entire tree, you also have gas from your own waste because you're cultivating it. And that would be part of the structure. Now you've got a gas chamber probably down at the bottom. I would I imagine having three basements for my ideal growing structure because I want to get down to the roots and actually work with the roots and help to feed the roots and all that. You know, you can actually utilize the roots in the same way that you can use the branches. So anyway, I don't know. I think I'm just running off at the mouth at this point. But I hope that this clarifies a few things. Name that I'm currently going by, Rising Angel, Crystal Dragon, Christ Child. You'll see my government name for a lot of the accounts that I have, and that's just fine. You, you know who I am, you know who I am. I'll respond to probably Lars better than Ra or, you know, some, uh, Rising. Or, you know, Rising's probably all right. Getting used to my new name. But there is hope, and I'm hoping that I can pass that hope on to somebody else and that somebody else can take a hold of it and make some more hope for others. Uh, is it my idea? Well, it's coming through me. I can't claim it as mine. I had this idea since I was about four years old before I really knew how to put it all into words. I saw it in my head. I knew exactly how it would work, how it would, you know, sort of kind of how it would come into being just because I could see how the trees and the plants interacted with each other. Nobody was paying attention to that. Let me give you a hint. Work with nature, not against it. You're going to get a lot further and things would be a lot more efficient. 
a lot better off. All right. Rising Angel signing off. Thank <laughs> you.